Hello, my name's Karina Thompson and welcome to another episode in the series about configure within the MySonet embroidery software. In this episode, I'm going to be showing you how you can use quick font to create your own embroidery fonts. In this video, I'm on a PC with the platinum level of software installed, but everything I show you, you'll be able to do on a Mac. The principle's exactly the same. And more importantly, everything that I show you in this episode, you'll be able to do in any of the tiers of MySonet, including the free basic version. So if you're familiar with MySonet, you'll know that in actual fact, if you go to the letter tab and go to the font manager, there is the ability to open up quick font within the software itself. But we're not going to be doing that today. So I'm just going to close this down and open up configure again. So I'm on the utilities tab and here is quick font. And so the quick font wizard has opened up. So again, let me just zoom in a bit more and we can talk about what's going on here. So quick font allows me to digitize, to create into um, embroidery files, any open type or true type font that's on my computer. So the first thing I would need to do is click on the pull down arrow and choose the font that I actually want to digitize. And you can see we've got literally uh, hundreds of different fonts in here. But in actual fact, I am going to go with Bauhaus 93. So I'm going to select that, click on it. And again, I'm just going to zoom out a little bit because it will be easier for you to see. And so the next option here is the style of font. So the uh, default is regular. But it could be that I want to go for bold, italic, or indeed at, uh, bold and italic. But in this case today, I'm actually just going to go back to the regular. Now, the file type is um, a, a key aspect. So you could either digitize your font so that you're going to use it within the MySonet embroidery software. And I would suggest do that if you can, because there are some really neat stuff that you can do with the lettering within the software itself. But it might be you say, well, Karina, I'm not a subscriber. Um, and in that case, it's not a problem. You would check this uh, radio button here um, because you're looking to essentially digitize the font, you would put it on a USB stick, which you would then put into either your Husfana Viking or your FAF um, embroidery machine. So those are the two options. But again, today I'm going to be working within the MySonet embroidery software. And then let's take a moment to talk about the character set. The default is extended, which in most cases will be more than enough uh, for what you want. But again, let me click on that pull down arrow and you'll be able to see you can have a super extended and that will give you some more fancy um, uh, characters like, for instance, a hashtag or square brackets, those kind of things. And then there's the option here if you wanted to um, digitize uh, fonts in other uh, characters like Russian or Japanese or Greek or Hebrew. So it's worth knowing that, um, uh, you know, if you really need to do some very um, specific stuff that you can do that. So um, I'm just going with the regular extended and then I am going to hit next. And you can see over here, we've got a preview here of what these letter forms are going to look like. But in actual fact, I'm going to click up here and let's start on satin. So this is the stitch type. And you can see again from the previews, it's giving some kind of indication. Now, um, just coming down, you'll always have the option if you wanted to, you can go in there and change the properties in this case of those satin lines. If I wanted to change the density in some way, uh, those kind of things. Now, if I was digitizing for my USB stick, 
I would be changing the output size here. I can click on those little arrows to bring them up and down, but I'm not, um, and uh, that's, that's why that's grayed out. So you can see we've got a minimum and a maximum size here. And at the moment, for me, I think this is looking a little bit squashed. You might find that actually digitizing your own characters, um, that it tends to work best with really a slightly larger size on here. So straight away, you can see that um, I've gone up in my size up to 25. Um, and and to me, that's actually looking a little bit better. What I will also do is I'm just going to click up and uh, increase the size of the maximum as well. Um, and that means what this is doing is this is the we're optimizing it. So this will stitch out best between the size of uh, 25 mil and 50 mil. And there again, let's talk about the joining point. So uh, baseline would mean that there would be, um, in this case, a jump stitch essentially along the baseline at the bottom between any letters I stitch out. Now, if you wanted to, you could choose a nearest point where, for instance, in the case of a B, probably that uh, the joining point might actually be uh, at the B rather than at the bottom. And that's a personal preference thing. And of course, if you want to, rather than having a jump stitch, you can put continuous and you'll actually have a, a, a running stitch line. Down here, if you need to change the thread color at this point, you can do or the border color or the applique color. And I'll come on and talk to the, ab about those in the minutes. So that that just gives you the groundwork of what these options are on this page. Now, sometimes using the satin the effects can be a little bit mixed. So if you find that you're getting odd breaks in terms of your satin stitch, what I would say is have a go going with a pattern fill option. And that will be, as you'd imagine, it will be just a pattern fill. So you might not get some of the texture that you get with a satin area, but I tend to find that you get a more reliable result going with a pattern fill. But let's have a look at some of the other options. So you could have a pattern fill and a satin border, and that will give you a lovely effect. And again, you can see the software's um, going to give you the preview. But I just want to draw your attention here. I mentioned earlier about how some of the fancier stitches tend to be quite big. So if you look at this, the minimum size on this one is 80 mils. So that's eight centimeters. And that's because if you think about it, we've got this, um, we've got a satin border on there. We've got the pattern fill. So just be aware um, that if you're going for a very fancy uh, option in terms of your choice of stitch type and indeed the font, you might find that it works best quite large. You could just have just the, your satin border. You could go with an applique. Or you could go with just um, an outline. And of course, it's possible on any of these that you could then go in to uh, the stitch option. And for instance, in this case, it might be that you choose one of the fancy motif stitches um, that's available within my Sonet. But today, I'm actually going to go back to pattern fill. Another thing I forgot to mention earlier is down here, can you see it's actually showing me um, the proportion of um, what the uh, fonts are looking like in real life. So in this case, you can see that this is 63% of the real life size. I'm then going to click next. And you can see that we've got um, a dialog box here whilst it's generating that font.
And then let's actually talk about what's going on here. So the uh, quick font feature will actually label the font in a very specific way. So in this, you might remember this font is called Barhouse 93, but then we've got an R, which is indicating this is a regular uh, font, so it's not uh, italicized or uh, bold. We've then got an F because this is a pattern fill and an E because it's extended. If it was super extended, it would say SE. And then, of course, we've got that technical information that this is optimized for the sizes between 20 mil and 120 mil. Now, if I wanted to, I could actually delete this out and call it Karina's party font. If, I, for instance, I was doing something very uh, particular and it's suggesting that it's going to save this into the My Fonts folder within my Sonet. I'm happy with that and I would suggest to start off with uh, go with those defaults. Of course, if I was saving this onto my USB stick to put directly into my Husqvarna Viking or FAF um, embroidery machine, uh, this wouldn't be greyed out. This was um, this would be the uh, file directory for that. Of course, if I wanted to, I could print out the catalog so I can see um, uh, what all those letters look like. And of course, it might be that I'm doing multiple fonts. And if I check that box, once I'm finished, that will take me straight back to the start of the wizard. But the thing that I love about this page is this feature. There's this next button, which allows you to scroll through the alphabet because it might be that actually you want to look at a very, very specific letter and just check, yes, that's what you want. So in this case, I'm, I'm going through because I just want to double check that the K's uh, are going to be OK. So I've got my uppercase K and I've got my lowercase K. So I'm happy with that. So in this point, I can click finish and you can see I've got a dialog box here saying, oh, uh, it actually disappeared off saying save my font. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to um, uh, close down configure. And in this case, I'm actually going to take out that uh, my Joe command. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the pull down arrow up here. And if I scroll, scroll down, uh, in actual fact, I'm on my fonts. I'm going to scroll down and here is Karina's party font. So I can click on that. So I've got my uh, text here from before. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to make this a little bit bigger because as I explained before, I think usually these fancy um, fonts look a little bit better. So I'm going up to 40 uh, mil there. I've got the regular block selected and now I am going to click apply. Those of you that are eagle-eyed will notice in actual fact at the moment this isn't quite fitting uh, within my frame. So I'll either need to pick a bigger hoop or perhaps rethink my font size. So hopefully you can see how easy it is to take an open or true type font within your computer and turn it into an embroidered font. Happy sewing.